you know, there's a lot of questions about how you protect a spreadsheet. Um, you know, the, the typical the typical ways you would um, go uh, and put that protect sheet on, and that's often a good way. There's some there's some issues with it using uh, other other components in Excel, and uh, you know, there's a lot of playing around to get it just right because you'll make changes and it'll say the spreadsheet is locked. Um, so there's a poor man's way to do this, and I'm going to show you the poor man's way to do this that works in a pinch. So let's say you have a contiguous area, and by contiguous I mean, you know, users are may only select in here, they're not going to go out here or out here. Um, what you can do is you can actually uh, change the scroll area property of your spreadsheet. So I'm going to go to the developer tab, make sure you have that enabled, click properties, um, and then the properties box popped up over on my other screen, so I'm going to drag it over just so everyone sees. Okay, so I have this property already selected. It says scroll area, and I can, um, I guess I have to type it in manually. So what I can do is I can say, let's say, A1 through K20. That sounds good. So I hit enter, and you can see it put these, um, I put the uh, reference, the absolute reference pieces right next to it. Okay, so you can see that I'm clicking around within that area, but I can't escape that area. So that has become the only region that I'm able to select. And you can see this actually works very similar to the uh, way you can unlock a cell and uh, protect the sheet. So this is a very poor man's way to do it very quickly. And one other cool thing about that is that this, in fact, does lock the scroll area. So I'm actually scrolling with my wheel mouse right now. It, it won't scroll down. You see that I'm, I'm doing it in the corner. It won't do that. All right, so something you should know about this, this scroll area. Problem is, is that you can save a spreadsheet and it's not going to stick. I don't know why it doesn't stick, but you type it in, it's going to stay for as long as you have that spreadsheet open. You're going to save it and it's going to disappear. So how do you get around that? Well, we have to turn to our good old friend, VBA, and I'm going to just show you very quickly what I did. So you're going to go to this workbook, which is, you know, your workbook object, and then there's the workbook open event, which is called when uh, your workbook is open, you have macros enabled, and here I've used sheet one, so I've used that uh, sheet sheet object, and I always like to retype things for you. So sheet one, dot scroll area, and then you can just put it in here. So um, let's say K20. So something like that. I'm going to hit F5 real quick. It's as if I just opened the workbook, and it has the same effect. So make sure that once you've decided, so you'll click properties, and once you've decided the scroll area that you like, you know, copy and paste that into that, for, into that uh, I shouldn't say formula, that code I just gave you. And that's how to do it. So I really like this because it allows me to um, keep a region uh, open to be clicked on, keep another part of the re uh, spreadsheet locked, and it's very easy, and I don't have to deal with the protect and unprotect. Now, does it work in every situation? No. So this is something where you're going to have to balance your needs um, against your level of protection. So, But I really do like it as a very simple solution, and that is my tip. What, I'm wondering about um, what are some of those scenarios where it doesn't work, and particularly, can you partially protect the table with that? Um, there's something about, uh, you know, someone who's smarter than me could probably answer that. There's a problem, in, uh, or I should say, there's a time when it is actually useful for tables, because I guess tables have an issue with um, uh, pr uh, workbook protection, Someone, Ken, can you jump in? Do you, do you know about that? Someone probably knows more about that than I do, that sometimes they don't seem to work. As well. oh, I generally don't protect the sheet that has a table on it. That's where I expect my users to do their input. Right, right. There is, some, there is something about that. I'm sure there are people watching banging their heads saying, come on, Jordan, you should know this. But I don't. But I'll tell you when this doesn't work. Um, it doesn't work when you have... So I'm going to jump back to our screen. Um, this can only protect a contiguous range. I hope that word is right when I say contiguous. Mm -hmm. By that I mean the range has to all be connected. So I can't do this and then do this. It's not going to let me do that. Uh, it has to be one whole range. So if you're doing that lock, you know, if you're going to do the locked, um, if you're, or I should say if you're going to unlock them, uh, I'll just right click and you know, you do the protection, you flip off the lock, and then you protect the worksheet. That will work here. Um, so that is when you will need it. But for very, uh, very simple items, this this works. And also, this works as if you want to keep your users in one area of the screen. Um, right. Also, the scroll area can do that. So that's why I like it. There are other ways to do that as well, but the scroll gotcha. area is very simple. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, uh, Ken, yeah, I, I come across this issue a whole lot where there might be, say, five columns in a table and we need it to be in a table so that it can expand, but then there is one column that's got some super complicated array formula in it that they need to leave alone because it's calculating something that they need and, yeah, it is constantly balancing, okay, maybe I need to put it somewhere else, but it would be great to be able to partially protect the table. And I you know, think this actually, I ran into a product recently, uh, a little while ago, that, um, that that does something similar. We ended up actually buying a copy to go into uh, a project that I built for something else called uh, One Click User Form. Um, and the, the guy's actually done a really good job of it. And basically what happens is you can actually have a button on your worksheet. So you set up your table with all your formulas in there. And you click the button on your worksheet and it pops open a user form that actually is the input mechanism for your table. And it actually will lock all of your formula ones so that you can't go in and modify them. That's one of the features it has. Also, this data validation, a bunch of other stuff. Um, it's actually quite good. So it might be something you want to check out if you're doing uh, doing work for users. Not a one-click user form is what it's called. One-click user form. Okay. Yeah, and, and he charges for it, but as I say, I mean, if you're trying to develop an interface like that, it's it's costly. So um, it's worth looking into. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. So um, let's let's give this say three bottles of sriracha because it's great to know about it. It's great to know about it. I loved knowing about it and then yeah, it was disappointing to find out that after I came back, opened the file, that the scroll area had not been saved. So yeah, great to know about it. You can get around that. <laughs> you can get around that. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, you, you're head. working on another Sriracha, aren't you? Three ain't good enough. <laughs> you know, you it's because that. I insulted. I insulted the oh. Sriracha gods. <laughs> oh, no, 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 you didn't. No, no, it was taken. No, no, you did. That's the legitimate three sriracha tip. 